Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sorful, and the video you guys are about to see is something I recorded back in the beginning of August. So it's been a couple months since I recorded this video, and the reason why I didn't upload it right away or anytime soon was because I wasn't sure if the knowledge uh, in the video that I was providing to you guys was exactly top notch or if it was accurate or if it was something worth sharing with you guys. So while I did put a lot of effort into recording the video, I wasn't sure if it was the right amount of information for you guys. And and I never rewatched it, I just had it there on my computer and I finally took the time to watch it to see whether I should delete it or not and just, you know, revisit the idea again in the future. Um, but the video is actually pretty good. I want you guys to be the judge. Let me know if you guys learned something from the video. Um, I'm also going to be refining it with uh, little interjections in the video. So if you guys see me pause the video and have new commentary over it, um, for certain parts, just know that that's me trying to uh, make the video even better for you guys and uh, give you guys even more accurate information. So, sorry for the little bit of a delayed intro, but I hope you guys can understand and hopefully you guys can learn and enjoy from this video. Or enjoy and learn from this video. Thank you. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Sorful here, and as you guys can see, I'm on my second main, which is my Night Lord. Recently started funding him again because, well, I just love the Night Lord class, and he is my second main, so um, it's really fun playing on him, and I just finished the Galax Prize yesterday. But anyway, that stuff aside, today we're going to be talking about cubing, and I'm going to try and make this a little cubing guide for you guys. So the way this is going to work is, I'm literally just going to try and you know jam pack this video with as much information as I can off the top of my head and hopefully you guys get a good sense of um, how you typically want to cube your gear and what kind of lines you want to look for on your gear so it shouldn't be too hard considering I cube all the time but if there is mistakes in this video please forgive me I'm only human um, with that being said there's a couple things that are quite important when I when it comes to cubing in my opinion so the first thing is you know how much are you gonna be cubing right so if you're just one of the people who you know only have a couple cubes to use uh, you can't really do too much with those cubes um, another thing is guys the maple story if you guys don't know has an event called double miracle time or miracle time it happens about three times a year I believe three or four times a year and if you are someone who needs to save up monthly, you know, a little bit, they could throw a little bit of money on an X, then you, a person like you would most likely want to wait until Miracle Time before you use all your NX on cubes. Um, this is especially useful because not only will you have double the chance to rank up, but typically cubes go on sale um, while Miracle Time is around. So you'll get to buy even more cubes with the NX you've saved up. So make sure, you know, if you are cubing, you if you can wait, wait until Miracle Time because that's really important. Um, and again, it also depends on how much you have to spend. So if you're only spending a little bit, pretty much the first thing you're gonna wanna work on is your weapon. I don't care what class you are, the we your weapon is the most, the single most important equip that you have. Um, quite obviously without your weapon you can't even attack so unless you're a buccaneer of course um, so yeah it's definitely the most important um, equip and the reason why is because of the stats that it can get um, not only could it get a ton of attack because weapon attack that's how you scroll your weapon but it could also get the best potentials in the game um, which is pretty much attack percent you know, or magic attack percent if you're a mage ignore monster defense which is PDR or IED whatever you want to call it um, and boss damage you could also get damage percent and it could also have a soul on it and a very strong nebulite on it which you can see on mine there's a 25 percent boss neb uh, you could only put a, tw a boss per a boss percent neb on two of your equips which is your weapon and your secondary weapon so you could see why your weapon is your most important uh, equip that you'd want to work on so make sure you work on that first uh, as you guys can see my weapon is my only legendary equip on my Night Lord because I literally focused this the most and I've spent a lot of mesos making sure I had a good weapon because once you have a good weapon, um, everything you, you equip and everything you upgrade afterwards is going to be you know amplified by a certain amount because of your weapon because it's so good already and it has all these stats. So weapon is definitely like a kind of foundation for your character when it comes to equipment and funding 
So definitely try and make sure you get a good weapon first. Um, another thing I want to point out though is if you're buying equips with mesos, the same rule applies. Try and focus on a weapon first, but if you don't have enough for a good weapon, then try and just buy whatever you can that's a good deal. That's what I usually do when I'm funding. If I find a good deal on something, I just buy that instead. Like this mask or eye accessory, I got it from a friend for a good price. So I just bought on the spot even though I wasn't in the market um, for an eye accessory at the time. Like I was going to work on it later because it's a less important item or equip rather. So if you are buying items, just try and find good deals for items and buy it on the spot so that you don't have to worry about it even if it's not the one you're focusing on first. Alright guys, so I, I want to quickly interject to emphasize the point that I just made in the video where if you don't have enough to buy a good weapon, you just try and buy whatever items you can find in the free market that are for a really good price or a really good deal. I can't emphasize that enough. It's something very important, at least to me, when I'm funding a character. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely going to save you a lot of meso or NX or however you pay for your items. It's going to save you a lot of that currency in the long run. Um, and it's just a very efficient way to go about funding your character. So just really keep that in mind and don't take it lightly. Right, so obviously what, we're, what this video is supposed to be is prioritizing what to queue um, and stuff like that. So weapon number one, quite obviously the second thing you'd like to work on is your secondary weapon. Um, again, exact same thing as your weapon except it can't be scrolled um, so you can't get that ton of attack like you can on your weapon. Um, third, your emblem. Your emblem could also get uh, weapon-like potentials. It's almost exactly like your secondary weapon, except one, it can't have a boss nebulite on it. Um, I don't even think it could have attack percent nebulite on it, so you can't do that either. And secondly, your emblem, although it can get percent attack, percent damage, and percent uh, PDR, ignore enemy defense lines, it cannot get um, percent boss damage on your emblem. So that's why you're going to need to make up you know your percent boss amount um, with your weapon potential your nebulites and you know the five or four set effects for your equipment like this one and the CRA set because those give you boss percent as well alright so I know I said the third equip you should be focusing on is your emblem however that may not be the case uh, for your scenario for example only focus on your emblem third if you're 110% certain that you're going to be maining that character no matter what. Otherwise, it's kind of a waste of an investment because the emblem is untradeable. Unlike your weapon and secondary weapon, which you could sell back if you decide to switch mains, or if you just want to quit the game and, you know, liquidate all your stuff. My apologies for that. But, so yeah, you don't want to focus on the emblem. Uh, as your third item if you're not 110% sure that you're going to be maining that character. However, if you are going to be maining that character, then as I mentioned in the video, it's very similar to your secondary weapon, so it's going to add an extremely large boost to your damage and to your range and all that good stuff. So only focus on that third if you are um, maining that character for sure. Otherwise, focus on tradable equips that you could easily trade or sell back if you decide to switch mains. So definitely this is something to keep in mind that I kind of overlooked when uh, I first created this video back in August. And the reason why I overlooked it is because I had uh, this guide in mind for those of you who just wanted to know what to cube and how to cube, um, assuming you guys already know what your mains are. So. Um, yeah, just wanted to kind of go over that and explain it a little better. Um, if you guys are wondering the perfect amount or the ideal amount of each stat that you should aim for, I, ha I already have a video on that. I'll even have it in the link in the, the description of this video, it'll pop up on the screen. So many ways for you to easily find out what the ideal amount of stats you should get um, are. And it's, it's in total, so not just per equip. Um, so yeah, work on this second, this third. Um, but Typically, when you're working on your weapons, they take a lot of cubes because you want to get them to legendary, obviously. Um, again, depending on how many cubes you have, I'm not quite sure of the range, but depending on how many you have, you might just want to work on you know, your weapon. And I would say, honestly, it, it's fine to leave your weapon at unique for a while, provided you could get two good lines of like percent attack or percent attack and percent boss damage. Um, so you don't need to push all the way to legendary right away. Uh, it is very important that you do eventually because, like I said, it's the most important equip. Um, but it is fine to leave your stuff at unique uh, as long as you have two good lines on everything. Like you can see, I have a lot of uni uniques with even one one good line, right? Nine percent luck. 
So I have a lot of work to do on my Night Lord, but that's kind of what you want to do. Three weapons are the most important, obviously this one being first, and just try and work on your equip. So what you'd want to aim for is, like I said, if you're not really that funded, you only have a couple cubes and whatnot, just try and get at least 9% on each equip. Even if you are, you know, all your stuff is in epic, someone left a comment saying all their gear is epic. Literally, just try and get 6% luck on everything or whatever your stat is. It'll make a huge difference. And if you add it up, we have like, what, 20 equips? I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to count. But let's just say we have like 22 equips or something. 6% luck on like most of them is really, really huge. So even try doing that. It's all really about how much you have and how much you're willing to uh, use and invest in cubes. If you're a reboot player, this is a little bit more easier for you, but you still want to follow the weapon system. And then, you know, if you only have a few cubes left, don't don't use it on a weapon. You know, use it on a gear that you already have as epic or unique that you think could either rank up or get something good in the potential. For me personally, when I'm cubing, um, I, I typically like to buy my weapons already finished, like already made to a certain extent because I, I don't really have good luck with weapons. Um, so I typically like buying them, but if you can't afford it and you want to make it on your own or whatever the reason is, uh, then you, you want to make sure that you, you focus on that first, like I said already. So what having all three of your, your weapon equips done does is it, it enables your character to have even greater exponential growth because now once you get any equip with percent luck on it it's going to increase your range by a hell of a lot because on these weapons you're going to have percent attack and percent boss and stuff like that and once you do have those um lines on your equips that's that's enough for you to start bossing and stuff like that um but if you want your range to obviously go up higher and higher get some percent stats on your equips so um I have a video on that as well. I think it's called the perfect stat ratio or something like that, the golden ratio. But pretty much your character needs balance between percent attack and percent stat. So the higher your percent attack is, the more you'll benefit from getting stats like like luck. I'll get a lot more range from getting luck if I have a shit ton of percent attack. I, I hope that made sense, I don't know. But um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of how that works. But for me, for example, when I wanted, I want to start cubing like for Miracle Time and stuff like that on my Night Lord because my Wind Archer there's not much to do, and everything that I do need to do on my Wind Archer is just too expensive for too little of a game. So I want to start working on my um, my Night Lord for cubing. So what I'm gonna do personally, um, I already have you know some decent lines on some equips, which is more than enough. I have like I don't know maybe 80% luck or something like that. I, I have no idea. I'm just estimating, but that's more than enough. Um, for right now. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to try and get this up to legendary or at least unique for sure and try and get like 15% attack on it just like this. Um, this I kind of want to sell this in the future and buy a legendary one because I just find it better for me to do that. Buy an already good one like legendary like 30% boss, 15% attack, something like that. I don't know but I'm going to sell this and buy a legendary one so that all my weapon equips are done. And then what I'm going to work on next is my Gallic set. right? my Gallics and my Tyrants because these are items that are not only really good on their own but they're also tradable like if I wanted to you know for whatever quit my Night Lord um, then all that money I spent on my Night Lord wouldn't go to waste since I could P-Sock these equips Platinum Sisters of Karma and then sell them so I typically like focusing on items that you could resell that have resell value like this I'm not gonna work on probably ever because this is only my second main, and I could never sell this if I wanted to quit my Night Lord. So, um, if you are certain that you want to main that class, that you want to commit to it, just like my Wind Archer, go ahead and cube this, but again, you don't want to prioritize it so early on. Prioritize rings that are tradable, which are all the Gallix rings, LGR, any of that stuff, Scarlet Ring. Um, prioritize the rings that you could trade. Um, the weapons you can trade is that's why this one I might get to unique that's the only reason why I said I might stop it at unique is because if I decide to up and quit I cannot trade this I cannot sell it so um, my hat's good I already socked that with the whole um, maple hood watch event so that if I did want to quit again I'm always having that in mind because you never know it might happen you get tired of a class you want to main something different well at least now you can sell your equips make some money back and then fund the other class so you're not just stuck with a bunch of untradeable equips, you know, that you, you spent so much money on cubing. So I'm going to work on my Tyrants and my, my Gallix ring. I just finished the Gallix Prees yesterday, like I said, so I'm going to get the other Gallix rings and work on those. 
Um, and, and then I'm gonna work on my um, my CRA gear. So that's pretty much it. Tyrants, Gallix equips, and then CRA gear. I'm gonna be going in that order once I have this up to unique at least. Um, and that's pretty much what you wanna do. And what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna stop them at unique, um, but if I have a lot of cubes, then I'll try and push for legendary. But I'm just gonna try and get them to unique. Um, during Miracle Time, your, your main goal, I've said it many times, should be to just tier up, right? Um, if you have everything at unique or legendary, then by all means, feel free to queue for stats. But at that point, there's no real reason to wait till Miracle Time. Um, because if you're just queuing for stats, you can do that at, at any time. Just wait for a cube sale um, and then decide to queue then. So during Miracle Time, I'm trying to get everything up to unique or legendary and then slowly cube each thing for stats using either Meister cubes, Master cubes, or Cash Op cubes. So that's that's how I'm going to go about cubing on my, my Night Lord. The one thing that I'm not going to cube at all is this guy because it's only level 30, it's untradeable. It's literally only on my character for the 35 attack and 35 stats. So you, you also want to make sure that you're not cubing items that are almost useless to cube. So if you have a level, you know, 35 raccoon mask, uh, 30 attack, whatever the case may be, if it's rare, I would highly suggest leaving that at rare until the very, very end, if even then. Um, because it's just not worth it to invest so many cubes getting that to legendary just for, you know, mediocre lines of plus 9% stat and then plus like 4 or 5%. So definitely make sure you're working on the right gear. Like I said, weapons first and then tackle your tradable high value um, equips, so like the tyrants if you have any, then go to Gallix equips because those are pretty expensive, right? And that, that's pretty much how I cube. Alright guys, so now we're in the cash shop on the Mercedes and I want to talk to you guys about what cubes you're going to want to use and kind of when. So I don't really like talking about this and here's the reason why, it's because I feel like there's no real right or wrong answer to what cube uh, you should use. To be honest, um, what I feel is the most deciding factor is like I said in the first half of this video, how much money do you have to spend on cubes or how much NX do you have uh, readily available for cubes? Um, because typically if I don't have as much, um, I'll just go with red cubes, you know? You get more for less and it's just, it's just like a, you know, that's, that just feels like the right thing to do because you don't have as much NX as you would like to. Um, so I feel th this is just going to be my advice. You know, if you go ask someone else, they might tell you something differently. But you guys are here because you want to hear what I have to say. So um, my opinion personally is if you have um, not that much NX to spend, so I'm going to say maybe like 50k or something like that. Um, first of all, with 50k, I would only stick to main potentials. I wouldn't touch bonus potentials with 50k and x because bonus potentials are kind of you know very expensive they're the, one of the most expensive cubes ever to exist in maple story which are these ones right here so with 50k and x i would stick to purely reds um i would try to use reds to tear up again as i mentioned in the first half of the video i would wait until miracle time or double miracle time before buying those red cubes um and then you know going from there and hoping they could do work but a lot of people, they like to say during Miracle Time, if you're trying to tear up, use black cubes. Um, personally, I'm just being honest in my experience, I don't like using black cubes because one, they're much more expensive than red cube, almost, almost double the price. And two, in my experience, black cubes don't really have that much of a better tier up rate, at least for me. Um, I tend to have more luck with red cubes and it might be due to the quantity that I get as opposed to if I were to spend that NX on black cubes, but I feel like red cubes are definitely the way to go when, when you're trying to tear up during Miracle Time or whatever it is, but if red cubes, try a pack of red cubes. If it's really not working for you, then try a pack of black cubes and see if it does better for you. It's, it's all, that's why, like, I don't really like talking about it because I feel like there's no definitive right or wrong. Um, the only way to get a solid answer would probably be to spend like two mil NX in one sitting to get a good you know consensus of what is actually better to tear up with um, because I have better luck with red some people have better luck with black uh, you might have you know equal luck with both so it's really kind of a trial and error thing when it comes to cubing you're gonna eventually try both and I do encourage you to try both if you do have that next to do so just to see which one works best for you 
but I would use reds to um, tear up during Miracle Time, stuff like that. But basically, you don't want to cube rare items ever. I cubed a rare item in a recent video of mine on my Mercedes, and it made a lot of people a little bit upset, and <laughs> I understand why. Um, but yeah, I cubed a rare item. Thankfully, it went to Epic within, I think, one cube, which was awesome. Um, the reason why I did that is because I didn't have enough Meso at the time to buy an Epic Posco, and I didn't want to wait. So um, I did that, but you never want to cube a rare item. You really don't. You want to use Epic Pot Scrolls to get them up to Epic automatically uh, with a 50% chance to succeed, of course. But that's how you want to get your items to Epic. To get from Epic to let, uh, un Unique, you want to use whatever cubes you can find, Master, Meister, uh, you know, red cubes, black cubes, use whatever the hell you want, really. Um, whatever you, you have the, uh, the means of getting. So if you could only get master cubes, whether by crafting or bossing, do that until they get unique. Um, because those cubes actually have a really, a, a pretty solid tier up rate, in my opinion, and in my experience, at least to go to unique. And then once you're at unique, you know, I would preferably wait until a miracle time event is around and then use again whatever you think works best for you, whether red or black cubes. Um, so that's pretty much how I, I, I cube. Uh, that's what I want to tell you guys. Again, there's not really a right or wrong. It's more so how much NX do you exactly have. Um, in my personal experience, I get better luck with 50k NX spent on red cubes as opposed to 50k NX spent on blacks. So. I don't really see uh, too much of a need to use black cubes ever, that's just me when I cube. Um, like, I, I don't even like spending the extra money on black cubes if I'm just trying to save my current potential while trying to look for a better one. I, I, I'd rather just get rid of my, my potential altogether. If I'm trying to get a better potential, it's because the one I'm cur I currently have is not good enough. So I don't really want to spend a thousand NX extra per cube just to keep that not good enough stat, you know? So that's how I think personally. I feel like black cubes are kind of a ripoff. Again, it's based on my luck with them. So you try them at your own discretion. Uh, as a, When it comes to bonus pots, there's only one cube for them, so that's the only thing you can do. I will tell you that bonus, uh, bonus pots do tear up a lot faster and is to be expected. These cubes are expensive as hell, $2.40 per cube. Um, and so, yeah, these are the only cubes you could use. They tear up really fast. However, it could be a very, very expensive uh, journey. Bonus pot cubes are not that cheap. Um, sure, they tear up pretty quickly, but sometimes they don't. And when they don't, it really sucks because you're paying so much per cube. And not even that, but it's it's about getting this, the right stats as well. So that it costs a lot of money. Just I wouldn't touch bonus pot cubes until my main pots are pretty solid, at least at least 18% of everything and then I would probably tap into bonus pot cubes when pretty much when your main potentials are becoming too expensive uh, to increase with not much reward so like if you have to spend too much NX to get a 3% increase in your main pots that's when I would jump into bonus pots because it's, because it's just going to be that much ben more beneficial for your character uh, in its current condition its current state. Um, there's a few event cubes like I think violet cube and I think there was another one can't remember I don't know why I'm blanking out but violet cubes pretty much if you have NX when the event comes around you definitely want to buy those and try for uh, you know really good lines on your main potential so that's kind of what cubes you want to use and kind of when um, again it's my opinion you could ask around see what others say uh, by all means let me know in the comment section right below that like button which cube works best for you and we could have a little discussion about cubes so Hopefully you guys found this video informative or helpful in some way. I really do hope you guys find this, uh, um, you know, able to help you, especially you new players out there. Uh, if I could have done something better or something different that would have helped you understand things a little more, then by all means let me know. Um, and I'll try to, you know, work on it and be better for the next time. Thank you all for watching. As always, guys, stay calm and maple on. And I'll see you on the next one. Frankie, don't say hello. Say bye-bye.